Hello, everybody. Good evening. Happy Friday to you all. Welcome to the Dixie Bell page. Um, happy Friday. TGIF, right? Um, so, my name is Jay Poe. I'm with the Purple Posy. I am the owner and artist of the Purple Posy. I'm a content creator for Dixie Bell, and I'm a business coach and a mentor uh, for my private membership group. I'm trying to get this little thing there. There we go. Um, so welcome. As you guys jump on, y'all say hey. Let me know where you're watching from. I always love to know. Hey, hey, I see everybody popping on. So tonight, I've got a little project for you guys that I thought would be kind of cool. We're doing this around the house type of thing. You know, the holidays are coming up. Everybody's going to want to fix up their house and they're going to want everything to look pretty and all that. So I have two end tables in my living room and they are two completely different styles. They're not even close to looking the same as far as style, height, width, anything. But there's an easy way to kind of make them cohesive with just some paint and a, and a technique. Really? Hey there, Dixie Belle. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to show you guys the nightstand or the end, the end tables. Okay. First. Um, so we've got this one here, which is what I'm going to show you guys tonight, how I did. Um, and it's just, it's got a lot of detailing in it. Um, but that's it. There's no drawer or anything like that. This other piece that I've got has a drawer. It's a completely different style. Doesn't even sit the same height. Hey, they're from Michigan. Um, they're two completely different pieces. Now, since this has a drawer and this one does not, I went ahead and added some would you bend to kind of emulate that feel, you know, of a, of a door pull or a drawer pull being there to make them more cohesive. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna unwrap. I got myself all tied up there. So, um, and I'm gonna use the wood graining tool. I don't know. Have you guys used the wood graining tool yet? I've had the wood grading tool for about a year and a half, I'm not even kidding, and I just barely opened it today. So this little table back here was the first time I've ever used it, and it was so easy and so simple. I'm, I don't know why I haven't tried it before. Hey there from Maryland. Hey, Kathy, Holly, Mindy. Hey there, guys. All right, so I will tell you that before we get started, um, this, these have been painted several times, <laughs> several times. Um, I've used them for projects to demonstrate um, techniques and products and things like that. Hey there, Janet. Hey there, old friend. Um, so they've been painted several times and they've got a lot of um, brush strokes in them. They were painted in a different paint brand before. Um, I just went with it. I just worked with it. I didn't sand anything down. I just cleaned it with white lightning and I went to town. Because we're going to have a little wood, rusty kind of look at the top, rustic kind of look at the top anyways. But the color I used um, for the top was actually a 50-50 blend of pine cone and mud puddle. Just because I had I've used it on a, a piece that I just finished up and I had some left over and it just happened to match my um, some of the colors in my leather couches really well. Um, so it worked out kind of good. So I've 50-50 mud puddle and pine cone on the tops. The bottoms of the pieces are sea glass. It's a really pretty uh, well sea glass color there um, and this is simple and it's basic and anybody can do this guys anybody can do this it's so easy to do all right so I've already got two coats of everything on here it's dried pretty well and how I got the look over here on this one is with voodoo gel stain so I painted it I let it dry for a couple of hours let it get good and good and dry um, and then I used voodoo gel stain um, in tobacco road and the wood grading tool and got that look and it looks super stinking cool I love it so much um, I could not get into the lips here I uh, just because of the way it I don't know I, just, I couldn't get in there so I just dry brushed kind of dry brushed some voodoo gel stain over the sides and it looks cool I mean it looks like wood it's crazy I'll bring you guys in close there at the end so uh, anyways I'm gonna shove this out of the way sorry if that was loud and we're gonna get started and I'm gonna show you guys how to use the wood graining tool okay I went this way on that one 
Make sure y'all can see. Hello, hello, everybody. Where's everybody watching from? Y'all let me know. Okay. What you'll need is, um, oh, my stuff is scattered everywhere. So this is the wood grading tool here. It comes in a little box like this, or a little package like this, and it comes with three different attachments to it, and I'm, I'm just using this, the, the round one. It's got a triangle and then a really tiny, a, a really tiny one. Um, but I'm using the larger one, okay? And, hey from Florida, hey there. Um, then you're gonna wanna grab a, just a chip brush. I'm using the Dixie Bells Premium Chip Brush. And have some paper towels or some shop towels ready and a paper plate, okay? Uh, all right, let's just go. So, Voodoo Gel Stain is a water-based stain. This is so weird. It's a water-based stain. Um, it's fun to work with. I use it a lot to grunge. Um, you can also use glaze to do this as well. You could use, a, you could use, um, you could probably use paint if it was watered down just a little bit if you wanted to, if you wanted to go with kind of a funky, like a, you know, like a purple wood kind of color. You could totally do that as well. I did not seal this. I did not put easy peasy wax on it or anything like that. It's just straight paint. Okay, so on your video gel stain, you're gonna wanna shake it up really well because it is water-based and it will separate. Um, and this, I just used up my last bit. So this is a brand new bottle that's been sitting on the shelf for quite some time. If you guys have any questions at any time, y'all please drop them in the comments. Dixie Bell's on here to help answer questions if I don't see them. Um, and I'll come back through after, after we're done and I'll answer any that you might have. You can tag me in there. You can shoot me a message on my business page, the book of Posey. There is a link there for you guys um, to purchase any of the products that I've talked about tonight. Um, this one will take you directly to the wood graining tool, which is fun and I highly recommend you trying. Um, but you can also find your local retailer. We've got a local retailer and if not, you can order that from me and that helps my business out. And I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you. All right, so once you've got it shaken up, shaken, 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 I don't know, real well, I'm gonna go ahead and get my chip brush ready. It's been sitting been sitting out some baby wipes around it um okay so you're going to want to work in small sections and bring you guys down whoa not that far you're going to want to work in small sections so we're going to just kind of pour it on there like so and that may not be enough but we'll see and then you're going to take your chip brush and you're just going to kind of smooth it out, like smear it out, make sure it's covered real well. I don't think I put enough. Let me get a little bit more. Now, I'm not worried about making a mess on the side because I'm going to do like I did on the other table. I'm just going to go around kind of with a dry brush of the Voodoo Gel Stain and just kind of dry brush them on there. All right, now, you're gonna wanna take this and try it. Baby, go find your sister, please. I'm live. No, baby, you can't. I need you to go find your sister, please. No, go get, go get your sister, please. Chloe? Sorry, sorry, guys. Chloe? Chloe? Come get her, please. Baby, I need you to go. Come on. No. Baby, stop. Gosh, I'm so sorry. I need you to go, please. I'll be out in just a minute. Come on. I'll be out in just a minute. Go get her some fruit snacks or something. Is it fruit snacks? Bye, baby. I love you. Okay, so sorry. This is going to dry. This is gonna dry. Shut the door, please, thank you. So you're gonna to wanna to take it, and when you apply it, you're gonna to wanna to rock it back and forth, okay? Just like that. So we're gonna, we're just gonna, uh-oh. I pushed too hard. I pushed too hard up there. Um, I scratched back the paint. Don't press too hard. You don't have to press super hard. Um, and then you just, you'll do it until you kinda of get the look that you're going for. 
until it looks like wood, really. And this will get gunked up a little bit. So what you do for that is just have a paper plate ready with like some shop towels and you can just kind of spray it off. Out, please, Olivia. Chloe, gosh, I'm so sorry guys. Olivia, go. Baby, I need you to go. Jackson! God, I'm so sorry. Seriously. Come on. Come on. I'm gonna, uh, hey, I'm gonna be out in just a minute, okay? I really need you to go. Olivia? Oh, gosh. I'm sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. All right, so you can clean it off that way. Oh my gosh, she's having a fit. Um, you can clean it off that way because it will get gunked up. So just have that ready and set to the side. And then you can just kind of tap it off with um, your towel there. She's gonna bust in here again, I know it, and I'm so sorry. Okay, and we're going to go to our next section. <laughs> oh, kids. They're fun, right? Never a dull moment. Now, it's okay if you overlap, because you can always go back over it. You can go over it a couple of times if you need to to get the look that you're going for. So I'm overlapping just a tiny bit where I've already been. Um, there, okay, so you can start at any angle. Probably should switch it up every now and then. Until you get what you want. And just rock it back and forth. Okay. It gives you a different look every time, just like wood. It's really cool. I'm going to spray this off. I don't have to get it completely clean, but... I mean, this is what it looks like when I spray it off. I mean, there's still stuff on there, but you get the majority of it off. Okay, and just again. You see how easy this is? It's super easy. To do, and like I said, you can use glaze. You could probably use watered down paint. I don't know, I might try that um, to see, test that out, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't see why you couldn't. You probably, if you're gonna use a, a watered down type of paint, if you wanna do like a really cool, funky color, would wanna easy peasy at first. Um, she's just trying to help me. Yeah, I know. She's had a rough day. Um, yeah, lots of people from Florida on. See that. Back and forth. Just rock it back and forth. Until you get the look that you want. And I'm not super picky. I'm not gonna be super picky about this. I cannot reach that. I'm gonna just get it closer. Uh, Cause uh, I know it's gonna go in my living room and get probably banged on and colored on and markers and things like that because the toddler likes to do that stuff. It is the wood grain tool, yes, it is. That link there that's pinned will take you directly to the wood grain tool to take a look at. I believe it's like under $15. Not expensive at all. It's really fun. And they come with uh, like three attachments. Three attachments. Where do you purchase it? You can get it at that link. You can get it at that link if you don't have a local retailer. You can purchase it from me there. Um, I've seen where um, people have done the Voodoo Gel stain in multiple colors. 
where um, they do like Tobacco Road and then the Oven Smoke. I've seen that recently. My good friend Malia Klein at Mushroom Tree Market, she did that. Looked really cool. I did try that on here and it looked the gray looked really funny against this brown that I have. So I just went with the with the Tobacco Road, but it's fun to just play with the colors and have fun with it. I must have something on here that's, I have a, it's scraping. I didn't have that trouble before. There's something stuck in there. Yeah, be careful with that. I probably should have cleaned it with a uh, paper towel or a toothbrush or something. Welcome, very welcome. All right, we're gonna go on to this next section and then I'm gonna show you guys while this dries, whoops, while this dries, I'll show you up close the other one, what it looks like, because it's completely dry. It's been dried for several hours now. And then we'll work on the, um, the hardware, which on this piece is actually hardware, and on the other one is a Wijibin applique to sort of replicate or get the feeling of having a piece of hardware there, a drawer pull. You see? And you can go over this and go over it and go over it and go over it until you get the look you want. If you, so like earlier when I tried the, um, the two different color voodoo gel stains, it didn't look funny, or it looked funny, and I didn't like it. All I did was I took a wet shop towel and just wiped it right back. Wiped it right off, and it came right off. So that's the good thing about using the um, voodoo gel stain on these. I think that's why it's scraping. I've got gunk up in there. Should have washed it. Okay, let's do this last little section and reach it. We'll just do it all at once. Just a chip brush to smooth it out. You don't have to use a chip brush, but any kind of brush, smooth it out. Get it all spread out. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, like sopping wet or covered. It just needs to be covered. I really, it was funny because I was like, after I did it, I was like, man, why haven't I used this before? I've pulled it out and started to, and I'm like, no, I need to practice, and I need to do whatever, whatever. But um, it's not hard. I don't know what I was so scared of. And how cool does that look? I mean, it looks like wood. And I don't even know what this is under here. It's like got this like make skin type of material or whatever on there. I don't even know. So I couldn't really sand it down to the wood to stain it. So this is an option for you guys, the wood graining tool. Now if I wanted to, I could go back and do a little bit more and get it a little bit more um, grainy. I'm gonna do that right here. But I'm think, I think I'm good with that right there. So I'm going to leave it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the trip brush that I was using and I'm just going to go over the sides and just kind of um, dry brush it on there because I can't get the wood graining tool up in there. But you don't want to leave it, you know, this color. So I'm just going to kind of dry brush a little bit. And it won't be perfect um, coverage or even, so it'll look a little bit more authentic. Like maybe it is wood. I'm just gonna get up and do this. I 
and then I'll bring you guys in and let you look over here at this one up super close after we do the doorknob or the pull. I can't see me right now, but y'all don't need to. Y'all just need to see the thing. So again, this is a voodoo gel stain in Tobacco Road over a 50-50 mix of mud, mud puddle and pine cone, <coughs> pine cone with the wood greening tool. Let me get this side real quick. And again, I'm not trying to cover evenly. I'm just trying to darken it up a little bit to where it matches a little bit better. Y'all pay no attention to this side over here. I didn't get to finish painting either one of these. So I just did the fronts. There you go, just like that. Okay, so now what I wanna do Again, this is just a really simple and easy way to take a couple of pieces in your home that don't necessarily match, but make them look cohesive just with a little bit of paint and a technique, right? So I don't want these to be super crazy and do my, you know, my boho stuff. So I just went with sea glass. I went ahead and painted over the hardware so that way I could get up in here with the gel stain because I'm going to use the same gel stain and I'm going to get up in the nooks and crannies here, get all up in there. And then I'm going to wipe it back. immediately. You can easy peasy this first if it makes you feel more comfortable. It gives you a little bit more time um, to work with it and play with it and move it around, you know, clean it up, wipe it back. You have a little bit more time to do so if you have the easy peasy on there. It creates kind of a seal between the paint and the gel stain. And like I said, just gives you a little bit more time if you goof up or you get it in the wrong spot or whatever. But it does clean up quite nicely, even without being sealed. So really, I just wanted to kind of dirty that up a little bit. Then I may come back and add a little bit, and it's kind of wet right there. Since this is over paint and not just over metal, it'll kind of stick to it. It'll stick to it pretty well, or it will stick to it. And that's it. I mean, that's really it. Super simple, super easy. Just pick on a, I literally just pulled a pillow off of my couch. I've got like a, these, it was exact match the um, sea glass looking pillows with like little fringes on there and I was like oh, I need to match that color matched it up painted it wood graining tool boom done and so now you've got I don't know if I, let me get it closer they're two totally different styles but they've got the same finish on them so it'll make it look a little bit more cohesive right in my living room let me pull you guys up close and show you the oh, the top here. All right, so I'm going to back up just a tad. So you can see here where it's real sparse because um, it's basically just dry brushing what I did with the Voodoo Gel Stain. Can you all see that? And it looks a lot like wood right there. Um, let me pull you up top and scoot back. Ooh, scoot back a little bit. Doesn't that look cool? And it's what? 
two colors and then a voodoo gel stain and that's all you need don't pay attention to the backs of these though <laughs> I didn't get finished painting cool right and then once these are done all I'll need to do is seal them up so you can see where I added that would you bend right there to kind of give it the look of like it's got a pool like this one over there but once that um, once that voodoo gel stain is dry, I'll seal her up with gator hide and she'll be good to go after I finish painting the rest of them. That's it. How simple is that? How easy is that, right? So easy. So again, if you guys have any questions, y'all please tag me in the comments. If I miss them, I'll come back and read them and answer them. Um, I'd love it if you hopped on over to my page and give me a, a thumbs up. If you would like to try any of the products that I use tonight or any Dixie Bell products in general, you can click on that link and it will allow you to search for a retailer in your area. And if you don't have one, you can order from me and it helps my business. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. One more look and we are done. Yay. I had a turquoise and I don't even know what color top that was over here initially. And this was all navy because I just painted it super fast to get it back out in the living room. So I've had mismatched end tables for quite some time now. I'm a little bit excited now. All right. Well, thanks guys for joining and I will see you guys. I'll be back on here Monday morning at uh, 11 central time and I'll see you then. Bye. Hi guys. Welcome. It's j here with the Purple Fuzzy. Um, happy Monday to you all. I had to think for a second, making sure I was on the Dixie Bell page. I'm pretty sure I am. Pretty sure I am. Um, you guys let me know where you're watching from as you jump on. I would love to know. Um, as I said, I'm J-Po. I'm the owner and artist of The Purple Posy. I'm a content creator for Dixie Bell, and I'm a business coach and a mentor for my private membership membership group, Painting Over Borders. So happy Monday to you all. So we are continuing to talk about around the house, um, what you can do um, around the house to kind of spruce things up. Uh, hey there, Dixie Bill. And I've got an end table behind me that I started last Friday um, here on the Dixie Bell paint page. And what I did was I took two pieces that did not look anything alike and I painted them with a cohesive um, paint technique or paint finish to kind of um, make them look, you know, more, co more cohesive and so today I want to talk top coats I've got them done and I want to talk top coats and how to decide what you want to use to top coat your furniture or your paint finish once you're done so we're gonna do that today and I'm gonna just show you how to use the top coat I didn't even look to make sure I had brushes um, because I have a ton sitting in the sink but I do so um, we can go ahead and get started as I said you guys let us know where you're watching from as you jump on okay so there's four i consider four main top coats that dixie bell has to offer um, for your for your for your uh, paint finish when you're done painting your furniture i love 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 gator hide gator hide is one of my it's my favorite it's my go-to and i use it almost on almost everything um, but gator hide is for sure what i use on the tops of my pieces it's water repellent uh, water resistant it it's the most the most durable one that you can get from Dixie Bell um, but I definitely use it on the tops of my pieces because this is going to be where you get the most action on your pieces um, these are going in my living room so I know my daughter's gonna have her her greasy goldfish and her her cups and you know whatever there's gonna be a lamp on it and things like that my coffee mug and so I want something super durable. If um, you know coffee gets spilt on it, I can just kind of dab it up and uh, let it dry, and it's good to go. Everything that I'm going to talk about today is water-based. It's water-based. So if something spills on it, it might leave a little ring there for a second. You just dab it up, it, let it dry, and it's good to go. It's good to go. But Gator Hide is my favorite, and I did go ahead and Gator Hide the top of this piece. So as you can see, it's got a little bit of a sheen to it. It does have a little bit of a sheen to it, which I love. It's not too shiny, it's not too flat and dull, um, but you can see what it looks like when it's done. This is two coats, two coats of Gator Hide. 
and that's the wood graining tool um, that I did Friday on here for you guys in case you're wondering all right um, my second favorite top coat that I that I have is the clear coat flat now this is more this is definitely a flat top coat it goes on you you cannot see when it's dry you really can't even tell that there's a top coat on it it gives you a, a very very flat um, look to it almost like a wax uh, if you were waxing a, a piece of furniture it's very very flat but I mean it's durable you let it cure like you know two or three weeks it's good to go I uh, can't scratch it off with your fingernail two coats and that's typically what I would use on the bodies the bodies of the pieces of furniture except for when I'm doing custom work and I know it's going into a kids room I will do gator hide on the bottoms of my on my furniture um, I will do gator hide I will uh, but clear coat fat flat is my very next favorite oh hey Malia hey um, and it is water-based everything like I said is water-based and you're gonna want to stir it up or give it a good little I usually just swirl I'll kind of tip it upside down swirl it swirl it and then let it sit for just a second make sure there's no bubbles I'll do that with my gator height as well um, the next one and all of these have different consistencies so the their clear coat flat is pretty it's a little bit of a thicker um, consistency than what would I have here, which is the clear coat gloss. So this is like a semi-gloss type coverage, and you can see it's more of a milky, more of a milky type uh, consistency, but this is more of a semi-gloss. Um, and to me, it looks more like the gator hide when it's applied. So it's got a little bit of a sheen, but it's not too like super, super shiny. Um, but this is currently what I'm using. I'm currently painting all of the baseboards and the door trim and I have white beams in my living room I'm currently painting all of those and I'm covering it with the clear coat gloss so that way the fingerprints and the scuff marks and the toddler you know juice that gets splashed up on it is super easy to wipe off when it gets dirty no harsh chemicals just you know mild soap and water super easy to wash off wipe off and you're good to go so this is currently what I'm using on baseboards and uh, door trims in my living room and then I think I'm probably going to paint my door that goes into my garage and I'll use this as well okay so that's it's kind of like a semi gloss the last one we have is um, satin satin is like the thickest consistency of all of these but it is going to give you the most shine it's going to be the most shiniest one ever so i had a custom one time and she said i want it to be as shiny as you can get it um, but it was going to go into her um, office and have books on it and decor and all kinds of things so i knew it was going to get a lot of tra a lot of um wear you know what i mean on it so what i did was i top coated it with gator hide and then I went over it with um, two coats of clear coat satin and it made it super shiny. It was midnight sky, so it was a super, super shiny black. It was beautiful. So that's another way you can use it. You can go over gator hide with a clear coat of your choice to give it whatever sheen you're wanting. So if you want to use the gator hide but you want it a little bit more flat, you can go over it with a clear coat flat if you want. So just a little tip for you today. Um, but I am gonna show you guys, so I am going to put a coat of the top coat on here, and I'm just gonna show you guys how I do it. There's several different ways that you can do it. I applied the gator hide with um, the blue sponge. I meant to grab it and I, for I completely forgot. With the blue sponge on the top, which is super easy to do, it does, it, it takes a little bit of practice. You just stamp your, sponge and bring it all the way out pour your gator hide on a plate put your sponge in there kind of wipe it off and then just go smooth across maybe i'll come on here and do that for you guys sometime but um, it does take a little bit of practice but i did apply the gator hide with the blue sponge um, just so i can get a little bit more comfortable with it because it does take a little bit of practice so i think what i want to use on this piece so this since this top has just a teeny tiny bit of sheen, I think I am going to go with the gloss. And so you can apply 
the um, clear coats with that blue sponge. You can apply them with a, any of the Dixie Belle synthetic brushes. I mean, you could even use a natural bristle brush if you want. I would not recommend that, but you can. Um, I personally prefer synthetic brushes for top coats, preferably top coats. So I am going to go ahead and use the clear coat gloss. This is the Super Milky. It's super um, thin. So, like I said, I'll just kind of give it a little swirl. I'll tip it upside down. As these sit on your shelf, you'll see, I don't have anyone. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I lied to you. One second. I've got an extra one right here. So, do you see this clear coat flat? Let me turn this down. This clear coat flat has separated. It's been sitting on my shelf. I haven't needed to open it just yet, how separated it is, because it's water-based. So all of that down has settled to the bottom and all the water has come up here. That's why it's real important to shake it up real well before you use it. Okay, so I'll tip it upside down. That's why I tip it upside down. So that kind of settles down here and I'll get it to come down here. And you can see some of that dripping right there. Swirl it around, you can stir it. Yes, you do. So you can stir it. You can do this. This is what I usually do. I swirl. And then I'll let it sit for just a second to get all the bubbles out. Let me move these back so I don't accidentally grab the wrong one. Because I don't need to open either my gator hide or my flat just yet. Now, when I apply my... Where is my water bottle? When I apply my top coats, I have found it is a little bit easier to apply them and I get a more smooth um, sweeping of my, of my brush if I lightly dampen my brush. I mean, just real lightly. And it's almost like I'm gonna paint, but just take my water bottle and just lightly dampen them. This is water-based anyways, so it's really not that big a deal, but it's not soaking wet. I can't wring out any water. I just lightly dampened it a little bit. All right, so this should be good to go. I don't see any bubbles. I'm gonna open it up. And just a pro tip here as well, these will stick. These lids will be super hard to open um, as, you, you, as you work out of them um, and get the, you know, the gunk around the sides. What I do, especially for my gator hide, since I use it so much, I have little jars um, like so that I pour my gator hide in and so it's not like I'm keeping my gator hide open as I work and so I just put it in here and I pour it as I need also I'll t I have a little the little tiny can of the Big Mama's butter the little the little one and I'll take it I learned this from Malia and it works so good. And I'll rub it on the outside of my rim because I'm not very good about cleaning. And so when I put it on, it's almost like, and you could use like Vaseline or something if you wanted to, but um, it keeps the um, clear coat from sticking from the lid to the jar and it makes it easier to open for next time. So that's just another pro tip for you guys. Okay. so. Um, we're just gonna go right in and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show you guys how I do it now I know I realize it's not gonna be super duper exciting this is not a super exciting like technique or anything but there are people who don't know how to top coat they don't know what to do they don't know what to use they don't know how to decide they don't know what the outcome is gonna look like um, so I thought I would just show you guys um, so I dip it in about like so I don't get a whole bunch at a time okay just kind of wipe it off like that this does have some molding in the center of it so I'm going to start over here and you don't want to overwork you don't want to overwork your um, clear coat and you'll be able to see once you've got it covered it'll be wet so in here I'm going to dab it just a little bit and then kind of swirl it to make sure I get it covered and then go over it just real smoothly. So don't overwork, work a little bit fast. Now you have to be careful, especially when you have trim work. You're gonna to have to watch it 
So if you get too much, it's gonna puddle up right there. If you get that problem, just lightly tap it with your bristles, the end of your bristles, to kind of soak it up just a little bit, and you should be good to go. And I'm probably gonna have the same problem over here as well. Now you, could, you can see how it's wet. Oh, it's backwards. You can see how it's wet over here. All right, another thing that you can do if you're wanting to speed up the process, you can heat gun your top coats um, if you don't wanna babysit. So if you've got a, um, a piece that's got a ton of detail or if you've got something that you've used sea spray on that's got a lot of cracks and crevices in it and you've top coated it, you can heat gun it to kind of keep it in place. You wanna be very, very careful that nothing has um, set up in one spot and globbed up, but you can heat gun it if you wanna go ahead and just set it so it doesn't drip if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here and we'll work this little leg right here. So again, I'm just, I'm not getting too much. I'm gonna dip it in. I'm basically covering up the white portion of the bristles, dab it off on each side, and just work one smooth way across. Don't overwork it, make sure you don't get any drips. Now, this is gonna be the fun part. Can you all see what I'm doing? Bring you guys in closer. If y'all have any questions, y'all feel free to drop them in the comments. Dixie Bell's on, um, and they can answer them for you if I don't see them. So I'm going to, I'm gonna go over the detailing, kind of like I did over there. I'm just gonna kind of swirl it in there like so, and then I'm gonna go over it again with a couple of strokes down, and then just work my way down. I'm gonna get a little bit more, and we'll work my way down the leg. Now with Dixie Belle paint, uh, it's a chalk mineral paint. When you top coat, it doesn't change the color of your paint. So I know with um, you know some other paints, once you top coat it, it kind of deepens the color, and that's not the case with um, Dixie Belle paint. When you paint your piece, it's true to color. So you really just need to look for, see I've got some, I got a run right there. I'm just gonna, you just need to look to make sure it's wet. Okay, so get it a good angle to make sure that you've got good coverage on your piece uh, to make sure you've got all of it covered, right? So I'm gonna dip in again, tap off on each side. I'm gonna get in this little, this little fun part right here, and try to get up in here. This goes much faster when you're not live. It is, it's not gonna take me four hours to top coat this, but I'm gonna run down the side and make sure I get this lip. Now this, this, these, these kind of lips are interesting. So you can kind of feather down, like so. You'll see how I did that, just kind of feather down at an angle so you get the top of this, because if you try to do this, these bristles are gonna separate in the center, and it's only gonna get the side of this molding right here. So just kind of feather down like that, like so, and it will get the top of that molding. Okay, so check over here. I'm gonna check over here to make sure, because there's some detail work right here and there's some up there. There's a little glob. Make sure I got it, and I'm good to go. Okay, I'm gonna do the back portion of this real quick because I'm gonna forget where I've top coated after this live if I don't. This back portion is real simple. I hope this is making sense and I'm hoping this is, is helping somebody because top coating is a little bit intimidating for some people, um, which is why I thought I would cover it. I needed to top coat these anyways. And it is a question we get, how do I choose? What does each look like? What are each for? Et cetera, et cetera, right? There is a link there for you guys. Um, if you click on it, I believe it takes you to the clear coat gloss, which is what I'm using today. Um, you can also use it to find a local retailer if you have one, and if you don't have one and you wanna try these products, you can order straight from me and it helps my small business out. 
and I appreciate you so much for doing so. Uh, I'm going to grab this other section right here, if I can twist this without falling, making it fall. All right. Again, don't overload your brush. That's important. Don't overload your brush. Tap it off. Because if you get too much on there, that's when you're going to get the runs. <laughs> the runs of the top coat. Let me rephrase that. That sounded funny. That sounded funny. And you don't want to have to sit there and babysit your top coat. So I'm feathering over the lip of that detailing to make sure and get it real good. And I'm not overworking. It's still pretty wet. Once it starts to dry, if you overwork it, it will gum up and you'll get like these little, these little balls, these little tiny balls and, they, and it won't look good. And it'll look funny. Okay. Pretty simple. If I wanted to, so let's just say I had top coated the rest of this piece and all I had left was this. If I wanted to, I could grab my heat gun and I could blast this with my heat gun gently, right? Just very, very gently. And once it was good and dry, I could go over it again almost instantaneously. Otherwise, you'd want to let this sit for a couple of hours and let it really dry and harden up. And then you could go in again with a second time. If it starts to drag, time to reload. Yes. Yeah. And you just want to make sure you're at a good angle. So I've got the ring light here and I can see like right here at an angle, since this is a pretty shiny top coat, I missed one little strip right there. I missed one little strip. So you just want to make sure you're at the right angle with some lighting. So you normally I'll sit on the floor and I have giant glass windows or a sliding glass door in here. And I'll twist my, my furniture to where I can see at an angle as I'm applying my top coat where I'm getting it to make sure I get good coverage. That's the easiest way for me, I feel, to make sure you're getting good coverage on the first one, on the second coat as well. That way you got good solid coverage on your entire piece of furniture. So that one, that little strip right there. Yeah, this is dry. That little strip right there, just didn't get it. Um, yeah, but yeah, so when you're using the clear coat flat, that's going to be the hardest to tell. So that was easy to tell because this is very, it's, it's a little bit glossy. So that was easy to tell and point out that I missed that spot. But when you're using the clear coat flat, it's not as easy to tell. Is the ring light the best? Natural sunlight is just, just, as, just as good. Any kind of light, really. Any kind of light, as long as it's at the right angle. Uh, let's see. Let me see if there's any questions on here that I can answer real quick. Um, 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 um. I don't think I went far enough up. Whoa, I got rid of comments. And now I can't see comments. I don't know what I just did. Um, if you guys have questions, y'all um, y'all feel free to tag me, the Purple Posy. Um, I've got my business tagged up in the, the title of this video. And I'd love it if you go check out my page. Give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate you so much. Again, there's a link there for you guys. It will take you directly to the Clear Coat Gloss, which is what I use today. Um, and you can also use it to find a local retailer if you have one and if you don't and you'd like to try the products You can order from me and it helps my small business um, Other than that, that's all I wanted to show you guys again Don't overload your brush Maybe start with a lightly misted brush, which is what I do. I found it helps a little bit Those are all water-based clear coats, so it's not going to hurt anything um, Gator hide is a little bit of a sheen Gloss is like a semi-gloss. Satin is very satiny. It's very shiny. And clear coat flat is flat. They're pretty self-explanatory. They all have different consistencies. The first time I started using the clear coats, I was like, whoa, wait a second. Why is this one super thick and why is this one super thin? Did I let it sit too long? It's completely normal. Give it a good stir. Shake it up, however you want to do it. Let it sit for a second. Get rid of the bubbles and go to town. Okay? 
All right, that was all I had for you guys today. Uh, again, y'all let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, I will see y'all next time, all right? Thanks for joining. Have a happy Monday. Bye.